project is, we're not actually going to demonstrate it for you because it's kind of, it's not really flashy like this project that we so it's not a whole lot to show. It interfaces a real time web servers. The goal of the project is our client does penetration tests, and the big problem with that is it's very hard to build in someone across the world what's happening, let alone someone who uh, might be in front of it. So, so basically, it's a two and a half parts project. There's um, Cygnus, which is a project client program, which once they penetrate the server, they install as a machine again, and it starts pulling back names, and then that talks to what we wrote. Server framework, which can then accept information from Cygnus and then request more information. You know, get these screenshots, get files, get the files, all that. And then our server prints all that information to the um, clients and people who are working on the testing. Basically, it was on a Twitter feed of documents, system information, screenshots, all that stuff coming from the compromised network. And so any executive or anyone working on that, on that project could see exactly what's happening. You know, a manager might watch their computers and see, oh, wow, that's really tough information. Why does John have that on his desktop? This is a huge security risk because, look, it's sitting there on the internet now well, on a secure server. But, you know, anyone could have gotten in and pulled this, what was supposed to be on like, you know, a curtain server right off his desktop. So, so as I said, you know, Cygnus installs the client network. Then, Whoever's working in the Curious Agent, but there's this company we're working for. And then it goes to Primus, do it, my pass, that's the back of Cygnus, and the client basically gets a nice view and they have sorting, they can subtract the RSS feeds, all that sort of thing. The problems we had were that just our client is in Austin, so we never actually got to meet him face to face, which some of the other teams had similar restrictions and something. And so the main thing was we needed good communication. He didn't like talking on Skype. He wasn't really a big fan of voice communication. So he much preferred to be able to type, I guess, do whatever he was doing without being tied down to his microphone. So we had one voice communication with him, and every other conversation we had over the year has been Which worked out surprisingly well for us because it meant we had an instant minute log. If we ever went to what we talked about last week, this poll of the Skype log, it's all sitting there. So it works fairly well for us, and we were able to very clearly communicate what we wanted through sending pictures back and forth and talking. But did we? Some of our early meetings went, you know, to an hour, an hour, fifteen minutes long, where it might have been fifteen, twenty minutes, we just been able to talk. Right. The other thing was is we were kind of shaky on the details as to what exactly we'd be doing at the start of the project, especially while we signed our NDAs, and he wasn't exactly sure what he wanted the project to turn into. He knew kind of big picture what he wanted, but the actual details thereof, he didn't know any better than we did. So we were very much adjusting us week to week as major things changed. Like, oh, now we've got a third server we're adding, so that we do real time information and just pop stuff in without having to have a page refresh. That was a fairly last minute, decently large change. Another thing was because of this and just the general rest of the project, like a lot of other teams have, had, had is we had to learn technologies that were familiar to all of us. Very, you know, we all had familiarity with Python, but none of us worked in class, none of us worked in the web server in Python, and certainly none of us worked in general. The other final thing was, we weren't writing the final version. You know, this company is going to put it, it's our secret project live with potentially billions and billions of dollars of you know, protected data on it without having our own experts go through it, you know, just lock down every single, like we were just using plain HTTP, they're never going to go live with something as unsecure as that. So we basically had to code knowing that one or more people were coming in after us and just ironing out everything we did. So we had, to, we had to code very clearly, very scalably, because you know, if you were on top of having every computer in Samsung's world headquarters talking to this one server, that's a lot of data going back and forth and has to be secure. So our biggest challenge was to try and code in a way that would be easy for the next person to pick up and work from. Our main lessons learned were Start with the good architecture. That was really the only thing we were going for us, because that we used a general scale project to work for. We had a very good framework, which was a huge help, and we were able to work from that. So when no changes occur, we were able to fit into some architecture and how we drastically run to be. Basically, we had the groundwork laid out, and just the specifics we didn't know. We didn't know what tree we were going to for, so we laid out the ground. And so, again, with that, we, we had to code expecting changes to occur, unless you're lucky enough to know what exact project we're going to get in a final state in the beginning. And the team on task engineering journals updates and other metrics. Otherwise, you know, you realize the semester is not by having tracking the metrics and you're not going to have any metrics. On that point, I just wanted to point out that if you 
no one likes to keep track of metrics, but if you expect to keep track of them, it helps if you have some sort of process or some sort of uh, web service in place that can help you keep track of certain things, like the number of events that people have done, changes to code, uh, that sort of thing. You want to see how active the different people have been. Uh, but obviously, you have something to get to uh, these two guys that are up here, but also so you can out the slap this to your team if you have any. Final advice is, especially on that note, is pick your team before you make a project. If you see a really cool project, you don't know who you're going to necessarily work with on that team. They could do it very well. Like, what's a lot? It's an awesome project, but I hate my teammates. It's a lot better to have a relatively boring project with good teammates because you're going to get it done, you're going to get it done on time, you're going to do well on the project. Final, and a second of what I'm going to say, really good to have good communication with the client because ultimately he's the one who's determining your direction, and a large part of your direction. If the client's not happy, you're not going to be happy. And finally, there'll be a lot of like small stuff with all these tiny little niche features you're quite working in. It's probably going to take about three or four hours on it. Longer. It's like, you know, forget about that thing. Work on the big things so that you have something working. You can iron out small bugs, make time. And you know, next week, maybe you may spend six hours trying to work on a tiny thing. Next week, you know, scrap that again. That's a terrible client goal. I spent six hours on that, it still didn't work. So, well, if we finish client, you can talk and say, look, I'm trying to get this real time update, whatever working. And I just, the framework's not letting me in on having these big long hack rounds. And there's basic, I can't find any information. Because you know, yeah, we're uh, well, actually, but they 